What's good, YouTube, and welcome back to another review. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Empire Ears Valkyrie and Wraith IMs. These are actually on loan to me from a head fight tour, which I think was sponsored by Empire Ears themselves. So big thanks for that, and I am very grateful for the opportunity to take a look at these. As always, what follows is going to be my honest thoughts, and I'll also throw up some timestamps so you guys can skip to where you want in the video. Let's quickly talk about presentation and accessories. I really think Empire nailed it here, and they've included some very, very nice stuff. And first up, we have these effect audio cables, which are included with both of them. Um, this is the Cleopatra, I believe, and it comes with the Wraith. So yeah, this thing, I th when I looked at it, I think it was a $500 cable. And that, that blows my mind, honestly. I don't think it's worth it from a functional aspect, but hey, it can't hurt to have it if it's included, right? So yeah, very nice cable, and let me show you the one that comes with the Valkyrie as well. All right, and here's the one that comes with the Valkyrie. I can't remember the name on this one, but I think it was at least a couple hundred dollars too. So yeah, very, very expensive cables. Um, they're definitely very pretty. And to reiterate, although I don't know if they're worth it from a functional aspect, it is nice to see that they are including some very, very high quality accessories with their IMs. The other thing that they have included are these final type E ear tips. And these are silicon ear tips. You can see that I've taken the small and put it on whichever one it was. But yeah, very nice quality ear tips and the metal plate that holds them all together is a nice touch as well. And the final accessory that they've included are these cases. And these are some very, very robust cases. Anyways, it has some serious heft to it. And if we open this up, you can see that there is a rubber coating inside to protect the IMs. This thing just inspires confidence and it really is a testament to the level of quality they are putting into the accessories alone. No, there ain't no stopping us. Alright, let's take a look at the Valkyrie first, and just look at that artwork, it is fantastic. Clearly Empire puts a lot of effort into their, um, into the small details and it really shows on the Valkyrie. And just look at that sheen, man, I think this is called their Dragon Scale one, but um, yeah. Now, just in general, from a build quality standpoint, I have noticed that Empire tends to be pretty far ahead of the curve, um, considering some of the other items that I have purchased and seen so far. And that's not even considering the, um, the sort of discrepancy you see between domestic manufacturers and overseas manufacturers. Solely in terms of build quality, I would say that they are up there with some of the best. Anyways, this is their Tribrid IM. It's sort of their baby flagship, I guess you could say. Starting from the low end, the Valkyrie's base is characterized by a powerful sub-base emphasis. The decay on this thing is ridiculous, and it honestly puts the Sony Z1R to shame in this respect. Along this line, I'm sure some people will want a brief comparison, so let's talk about that. The Valkyrie definitely has more quantity to the base, especially in the sub-base, but the attack also just isn't as clean. And there's another trade-off here, and it's that the speed of the Valkyrie's subwoofer is slower than the rest of the IM. And this is in the sense that it lags slightly behind the mid-range in the treble, so there's sort of a time domain um, inconsistency there. You don't really get this with the Zoan R, which has incredible coherency for being a tribrid. Overall though, the Valkyrie is most definitely a base heads IM. Rumble, slam, and texture, this IM is superb on all these fronts. Now, because this is a V-shaped sound signature, the mid-range is also expectedly thin, especially with male vocals. Stuff like country music just doesn't really work well with the Valkyrie, and it has sort of an unnatural tonality to it. Once you move to the upper mid-range though, it becomes a lot more serviceable. And to this effect, I find that the Valkyrie shines best with EDM and pop songs that make use of female vocals. And frankly, it's kind of addicting listening to the stuff the Valkyrie works well with. And when I went back to my U12T, it honestly felt like something was kind of missing, and I had to let my ears readjust for a while. Now, particularly impressive to me are actually the highs on the Valkyrie, and not just because they're necessarily good, which I'd say they are, but because they actually exist. The electrostatic drivers are really difficult to implement, and more often than not, they actually tend to roll off, the exact opposite of what they're intended to do, and this is something that I'll discuss further with the Wraith. Anyways, overall, the Valkyrie has an energetic, warm presentation. The soundstage is a bit more intimate, and there's a warm coloration to the timbre, which plays very well in tandem. Transient speed is on the faster side, sans the slower bass response, and resolution is pretty much par for the price. It's not going to hold up against established giants like the Zoan R or the U12T, but it holds its own surprisingly well from a technical standpoint, um, especially given its tonal balance. Along those lines, the Valkyrie is definitely a niche IM just because it throws any notion of tonal balance out the window, but it's also a very fun one at that. I could definitely see this being for someone who wants to round out their collection, 
or for someone who just likes being on the edge of their seat at all times. Great job by Empire Ears here, and they clearly had an artistic vision and the execution is pretty on point in my opinion. Really well done overall. Okay, and on the lines of artistic vision, it really feels like all notion of that went out the window when they made the Wraith. Yeah, I'm just going to drop a few disclaimers before I dive into my thoughts on this. First, what I hear is not what you hear, especially with IMs, there are a lot of variables that can affect how we hear them. Second, some people seem to actually genuinely like it from the reviews I'm reading, and that's totally fine, I'm not going to shit on people for that. If you like it, you like it, and that's just how it is. Finally, this is just my honest opinion, take it with a grain of salt. Pretty much everything I have to say about the Wraith is not positive, so yeah, if you don't take kindly to unforgiving explication, I probably would not watch my review on this thing. The Wraith sound signature is what I would probably call dark neutral. Um, it's quite inoffensive, but the problem is when you have a $3,500 IM, there are according expectations of what the sound should be like. And to this effect, the Wraith has too many flaws in its sonic qualities for me to simply call it boring. Starting from the low end, the bass response is clearly BA. It is totally one note, and it lacks all semblance of authority in slam. Just listening to anything EDM or pop-centric on here was just plain disappointing. Just hearing the notes hit with nothing behind them is just, just not it, man. It's just not it, Chief. Once you move to the mid-range, the mid-range is also not faring much better. The most apt way I can think of to describe the mid-range is if someone is in the room adjacent to you and they're trying to talk to you through the wall. It's just sort of muffled. Obviously, that's a superlative for demonstration's sake, but I think you kind of get the idea. Now, my main issue with the Wraith actually lies with the highs. As I was discussing earlier, the implementation of electrostatic drivers is pretty difficult, and that's why I was so impressed with the Valkyrie. They actually did it pretty darn well on the Valkyrie. And just to be blunt, the Wraith has no highs. At least out of the sources I ran it off of, it had no highs. It literally sounded inverted the first time I heard it. And to this effect, this thing somehow manages to tame some of the most trouble-intensive tracks in my entire library, and that is just ridiculous. Once we move to technicalities, things don't fare much better. If anything, they fare worse, honestly. This thing is running seven balanced armatures, and it is somehow slow. I don't understand. The Valkyrie is actually faster than the, um, the Wraith, and it just boggles my mind. I don't know what happened here. Think of any and every technical aspect that you could possibly throw at the Wraith, and you can bet that it falls short. I was curious if it was just me having the issue with the Wraith, so I ended up actually letting my dad listen to it, and I didn't tell him the price of course, and all he could tell me was that it sounded closed in and horrible. And that's really saying something from someone who has no experience with IMs. So yeah, I'm honestly not really sure what to say. It's a $3,500 IM, but just to, be, just to be candid, in all candidness, it sounds like garbage. I have heard... $100, $200 IMs that sound better than this thing. Now there is a caveat here, and I believe they tuned this off of something that wasn't strictly portable. I want to say it was called the Chord Hugo 2. It's sort of a transportable desktop amp. And apparently off of higher powered sources, the Wraith actually has some semblance of treble. My issue here with this though, is that if you're running the Wraith off of a desktop class setup, the better question is, why aren't you using headphones instead? It just makes no sense. A good portion of an IM's functionality is predicated on them being portable, and that's just one of the main reasons why they exist. Anyways, don't get me wrong here, I'm not mad, I have nothing against Empire Ears, more than anything, it's just kind of disappointing knowing that they, they clearly know how to tune ESTs as evidenced by the Valkyrie, and yet they have four of them in this thing and it has no semblance of highs at all, and it really feels like they just took a bunch of drivers, crammed them into the Wraith, and basically hoped for the best. Maybe they felt forced to release this because of industry pressure. It feels like a lot of companies are trying to jump on the electrostatic bandwagon, but it doesn't seem to be working out well, and the Wraith is a just a prime example of it in a nutshell. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe for future content. Peace out until next time.